Hello, everyone. Welcome again to Arkansas Live. Our guests today, uh, Rabbi Kurt Landry and Dr. Dwayne Miller. If you watched yesterday, it was awesome. And we want to continue with a second day. Call your friends and neighbors. Our topic is the Israeli conflict. Uh, we have uh, uh, biblical references. We have an interview with Prime Minister uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. That actually was done seven years ago by uh, Rabbi Landry. But it's an amazing thing as to how he addresses what's going on right now in Israel. I mean, if you have any doubt that God is not involved in the, the nation of Israel in what's going on, and if you've been confused, if you've been misinformed, I'll never forget, and let me, let me deviate from this and share this. I think it's so precious. Years ago, we were in Israel, my wife and I, we did five world leadership conferences with Dr. Lester Sumrall. We used the same tour guide. We became very close friends. And he was sharing with us uh, the history. And he knew the New Testament. And he was Jewish. And he said, now you Christians are looking for Messiah's second coming. He said, we're looking for Messiah's first coming. He said, and the scripture says that Messiah will touch down on the Mount of Olives and he'll walk across the Kidron Valley and walk through that golden gate that's been sealed up by the Turks. And he said, if I'm here and still alive, he said, I'm going to run through the crowd and I'm going to pull on the hem of his garment and I'm going to say, pardon me, sir, have you been here before? <laughs> I, I almost came out of myself. My heart just leapt. And <clears throat> I, I hope he is alive because that shows that his heart is really looking uh, for Messiah. And, he's, and he said, if, if I, he said, if I have that chance and I put on this, have you been here before? And he says, yes. He said, I'm going to say to him, please forgive me. I was misinformed. Mm. How many people do you think wow. in the church and in the world today that are misinformed? Wow. Well, you know the history of VTN. You know we're here. We're purveyors of the truth. So I want to pray right now for the Holy Spirit mm. to reveal the thank truth you, to you. Father, I thank you for your anointing today on Pastor Miller, on Pastor Landry, and on myself. I thank you. The Holy Spirit is going to communicate through the airwaves the revelation of truth to the people of God. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Welcome back, gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, second uh, edition of Arkansas Live where we're going to talk about the evangel evangelical community's partnership with Israel. Modern Miracles. Mm. I want to start with you. This <laughs> journey started with me when I got saved. I got saved in a bathtub in 1989, went to a small church in the state of Washington, and uh, got connected with some Jewish believers in Jesus and non-Jewish believers. And we started reading Isaiah 60. Mm. And it talks about how the Jewish people will return like doves to their roost. Mm. and that they'll come on the, sh the shoulders of foreigners. Mm. And, uh, and then shortly after that, only being born again a year or two, um, I was watching 747s leave Boeing Field in Seattle, flying to Moscow, bringing Jewish people from Moscow back to Israel. Yes. And uh, that's how it started for me. And in fact, we were involved with the first ship from Tarshish. It says, and they will return on ships of Tarshish first. Wow. So my whole walk with the Lord 22 plus years has been in the miracle of seeing that when the church in Israel comes together to establish God's covenant, miracles happen. Mm. Praise God. I remember when that took place. Do you remember? I do. Pastor? I do. I was in the ministry at that time and just a young pastor. And uh, it was almost like when you saw that on television, you were moved to tears, and yeah. I didn't even fully understand why. Right. I, I was the same way. Now, Lester Sumrall was involved in that. He chartered uh, some C-130s and eventually purchased a, a ship and was involved in bringing. And I know I sat there and I watched that, mm -hmm. and I just wept because some of those people that came from Ethiopia and different places, they still had been practicing the Hebrew language. Mm -hmm. Yes. They could still speak uh, Hebra Hebraic uh, uh, messages. It was, it was awesome. Okay, uh, Jeremiah 31, 35, 36, and we're going to go back to the interview with uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu. And thus saith the Lord, who gives the sun for a light by day, the ordinance of the moon, the stars for light by night, 
who disturbs the sea and its waves roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, says the Lord, then the seed of Israel shall also cease from being a nation before me forever. Mm. Wow. Uh, what are you going to talk to the prime minister about now? I'm going to talk to him about a very practical question. How, is we, how as the evangelical community, believers, how can we help and stand with Israel? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's watch. Bringing this message mm -hmm. uh, to the evangelical community. Mm -hmm. They burn in their heart to stand with Israel because of the scriptures, and they mm -hmm. understand the birthright of Israel, and they also understand something very important, that if Israel ceases to exist as a nation, then their God is not telling the truth. And we know the scripture says, that our God is not a man that he should lie. Uh, you know, there's a lot of pressure. One of the questions is, is how critical the time is. And I was reading your brother's book of Yoni's letters, and he had sent you a letter, I believe it was in 73 or 74, mm. uh, to you and your wife. And he was talking about then how he was seeing the unraveling of the country in 1973 and, and, the, and, the, and the pressure that wow. was, was there. And of course, here we are in, in 2007. Can you share with me a little bit about how he felt so much pressure then? Uh, is that pressure similar now or is it more uh, sophisticated? Well, you know, he fought in the War of Terror and he died in the War of Terror and the rescue of, uh, uh, of our hostages in Entebbe uh, held by German and Arab terrorists under the uh, aegis of uh, uh, the dictator of Uganda at the time, Idi Amin. So this was a bloody and murderous coalition and it was defeated by this great uh, raid in Entebbe that defied all, uh, all military history, really. It was probably one of the most daring rescue raids in, in history. Uh, and my brother fell while leading the rescue party. So uh, he was, uh, whatever the pressures he was in, he always lived up to to the moment, he always uh, uh, did what was necessary because he uh, felt that he was uh, serving not just uh, a personal cause, but the cause of, as he said, the unbroken chain of Israel's, of the people of Israel's struggle for survival and redemption. And he saw himself as a link in that chain. And I think at the end of the day, in every one of our struggles, uh, people rise to the occasion. You know, the, we always have some sometimes a few, the Maccabees who come and, and, uh, and save the moment. And, and I think we're in such a moment now. I think that uh, Israel is infinitely stronger than uh, it was uh, as a fledgling embryonic state. We had only 600,000 people. Now we have over 6 million people. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have developed a great uh, country and great economy, great uh, army, uh, and great culture. But nevertheless, we're also facing an enemy that has changed. It used to be the neighboring Arab regimes uh, that tried to push us into the sea. And now Arab politics has been overtaken by radical Islam, which is trying to take over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, in Lebanon, they're trying to set up an Islamic Republic. Uh, Hamas has set up uh, uh, an Islamic government, both of them uh, directed in many ways by Iran that seeks to create a Shiite uh, empire arming itself with nuclear weapons, both aimed at our annihilation, but also ultimately aimed at your uh, subjugation. Uh, and this is a new kind of enemy that we face. We've never really seen this before, and perhaps the, the only precursor is uh, really the mad ideology of Nazism. Uh, but this is something that seeks to envelop a billion people, a billion Muslims in the world. And Israel is at the eye of this hurricane, in the eye of the maelstrom. Uh, because we're simply the most forward position of our free uh, democratic civilization, which they, these people abominate, they hate. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we're in the front lines. Mm -hmm. And I think that this requires not only our own efforts and men like my brother uh, who will step up uh, to this conflict, but I think because this is not just a symbolic battle, but a battle really for the future of our world, mm -hmm. that we need the support of free societies everywhere. And in many ways, the difference between Europe, what you were talking before and today, is that in the 1930s, the United States was not involved, was not involved as a world power. So when this mad ideology came forward, seeking first to annihilate the Jews, same story. First we get the Jews, but then we continue with everyone else. Uh, no one was there. 
uh, you know, France, uh, Britain under a very weak leadership before Churchill, they weren't there. Mm -hmm. And so the mad dictator and the mad ideology spread like wildfire and conquered all of Europe. Mm -hmm. Now there's a difference. A, we have a state of Israel. We didn't have that in the 1930s, so the Jews can defend themselves. Uh, and B, we have the United States as the leading actor in the world. And in the United States, I think that the evangelical community has a very important role because it understands intrinsically that the values of freedom that we believe in, uh, a very long common tradition that we share that is being challenged by these uh, fanatics, that it's really under great uh, peril. Uh, and therefore, I think that the most important thing that we can see today is the joining together of all the potential victims of radical Islam That's good. To, uh, to defeat this force, not to let it, uh, above all, not to let it arm itself with nuclear weapons. If I had to put my finger and say, what's the po most important thing today that we must do, we in Israel must do, and you in America must do, and lovers of Zion, and lovers of freedom, and lovers of peace must do today, it's to make sure that these crazy people do not get their hands on atomic bombs. Amazing, seven years ago, this interview, and here is the uh, Prime Minister, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, talking about Iran not getting their hands on a nuclear bomb. Now, he said something in the earlier part of the portion, this portion of the interview about the link in the chain. You want to address that? Well, one of the things that is very uh, common in Jewish culture is that each one of us are a link in the chain, and we have a responsibility uh, to complete what God has asked us to do and, and pull that forward and not break that link. There is a certain understanding of that. And it is really my prayer, pastors, that, that the church understand that in that chain, it's not just Jews, but Jews and Gentiles. Mm -hmm. uh, the Gentiles are really not Gentiles. They are really, we're all Hebraically connected by the seed of Abraham. The right. blood of Jesus removed the middle wall to create in himself one new man from the two. So we all need to take that place. So anytime the truth is, is assaulted by the enemies of, which come from Satan, Ephesians 6, you quoted it yesterday, we battle not against flesh and blood. But anytime the, 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 the truth is being assaulted, we have a right as watchmen to stand up and as on this program and so boldly and clearly spoken, we need to bring the truth. Pastor, do you have any comments about any of that? Well, the thing scripturally that we must always point to is what we see happening is a fulfillment of prophecy. Mm -hmm. It's actually a fulfillment of Bible prophecy for the Christian and the Jew. But the reason radical Islam is on this tirade to create chaos in the world is in their doctrine. Right. They believe that it's in this chaos, the 12th Imam, the mm -hmm. Muhammad al-Mahdi, their Messiah will come and they're trying to bring about control of the world through their Messiah. But the Word of God's clear in Amos 9 that in the last days God will bring His people home. They will plant vineyards. The Gentiles will restore unto them their oil trees, their olive trees, which is what my olive tree does. Christians planting thousands and thousands. It's a fulfillment of Scripture. The Negev Desert will shall once again blossom because of irrigation. That's what my olive tree does. That's Rabbi Landry's, uh, one of his businesses there. And in that time, this is what every believer needs to remember. He says at the end of Amos 9, I will plant them in their land and no longer shall they be pulled up from the land that I have given them. Yes. And to quote Dennis Prager at Christians United for Israel, what Bible scholar doesn't understand that when God said, I gave it to Israel, he meant Israel. Israel. <laughs> That's true. And they don't occupy the land, as Pastor Hagee says. No. They don't occupy the land. They own the it's land. It's theirs. Title now, deed. You, you quote it from Amos 9, 11. Now, here's, here's uh, a re-statement of that. On that day, I'll raise up the tabernacle of David, right. which has fallen down, repairs, damages. I'll raise up ruins, etc. Define for us the tabernacle of David. What is that referring to? Uh, the restored tabernacle of David, that this could be a whole program, yes, but I'll, I'll encapsulate it. 
In Revelation, it talks about the Church of Philadelphia. The Church of Philadelphia has it, it, it has holiness, it teaches the truth, and it also has the key of David. This is really the church of, of, of our Lord Jesus Christ connected to its Jewish roots, doing its part. So Dr. Miller quoted Amos 9, 11 and through 15. So the Gentiles actually supply the trees and the irrigation mm -hmm. and the Jewish people supply the labor and the land. Mm -hmm. That is actually happening. Yeah. My olive tree actually was created as a first step of the restored tabernacle of David. Our ministry, we meet on Fridays, we keep the Shabbat, we have Davidic dance, we blow shofars, we light uh, menorahs, uh, we sing in Hebrew and in English, and we are Jews and Gentiles and First Nations coming together. Okay. Uh, let's go to the second video that we have with you and President uh, Netanyahu, and they're talking about um, action steps for Christians. What should we do? Let's watch. And that's why the people who are listening to us today, they have a say in our common future. They can shape the way that the American Congress, the American Senate, the, the, the White House, the, what it thinks, by what they think, what they communicate. Uh, and that's why I take the time to talk about it today because it is 1938. It is. And I agree. It is something that is coming our way, but the difference is that we know we already know because 1938 already happened. Mm -hmm. We're not going to let it happen a second time. That's very interesting. It's already happened. We know what the face of this thing looks like, and, and or we know what the spirit of this thing looks like. It just has a different face on it. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. This is really something. It's really Amazing. powerful. Okay. The last point that we want to talk about is the military action in Iran. Now, have you discussed that with the Prime Minister? Is there one more clip? Yes, there is. Okay. Uh, Zechariah 12, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all surrounding people when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day, I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. Wow. You had no idea seven years ago when you were interviewing the prime minister. Of course, he was finance minister at that time, but then you prophesied to him that he would be prime minister again, mm -hmm. and, he, and he is. And all of a sudden, everything you all have talked about, and it all coincides with the scripture, and it's all happening right now. Right. Well, we're talking about things that are of a prophetic nature, which yeah. meaning that they are being fulfilled in God's time clock. And Jerusalem is God's time clock. Uh, you just mentioned that you have a group from uh, Christians United for Israel. They're leave, leaving on August the 4th. Yeah. Well, August the 4th at sundown is the feast of Tish B'Av. Mm. They are literally traveling on the night of Tish B'Av, traveling to Israel, and that is the remembrance of the destruction of the temple. The destruction of the temple came because the children of Israel failed to follow the instruction of God, thus bringing uh, destruction to the temple. And we are at that same place right now in the United States. Well, it, the question is, are we going to follow the instruction or not? Mm -hmm. So when the scripture says, behold, Jerusalem is a cup of drunkenness, meaning that the instruction of God, we do not want to follow it. We are drunk with the lusts of the world. We want our way, not God's way. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Pastor? Well, um, you know, that's so true. And uh, I don't really have anything to add. That's perfectly said. And we can watch the next clip. Okay. We're going to go to this last clip, third video, uh, military action. Let's watch. One of my concerns personally as a leader in the evangelical community is there are the Christian Zionists and then there are just Christians that are not necessarily pro or con, but they're kind of riding the fence. And my concern is, is that if we have to, America and Israel deal with Iran in a military way to remove this threat, there needs to be some information right. uh, being told, like what we're doing today, so that, uh, that they, they don't turn on Israel. And, uh, and, you know, you see the challenges we're facing with the Iraq war in the United yeah. States. Could you address that issue? Well, Iraq is a separate issue because, I mean, it's related but separate. Here's how it's separate. It's related, obviously, because there's uh, radical Shias are fighting Sunnis and uh, 
and so on. All of that is, is clear. Uh, here's how it's separate. No matter what the U.S. decides in Iraq to augment the force now in order to withdraw later, to have a, an agreed-upon schedule of withdrawal, to have a non-agreed-upon schedule, uh, it's not important. Why is it not important? Because no matter what you do in Iraq, if you were to just, if you were to leave Iran, which is right nearby, to arm itself with nuclear weapons, then Iraq will go down the tubes. No matter what you do, Iraq will go down the tubes because Iran with atomic weapons will topple, will take over Iran, take over the Persian Gulf, make mm -hmm. it Persian on both sides so they'll take over the oil fields of the world, the, Saudi Arabia, they'll topple Jordan in short order, mm -hmm. they'll threaten us for sure, they say so, mm -hmm. and probably reach out beyond, well beyond into the Middle East. Mm -hmm. and that's their plan, which is open, it's expressed, uh, it's declared. So I would deal with this country that says that it wants to become the dominant power in the world, that views you as the great Satan, that plans to resurrect uh, uh, an empire from a hundred, a thousand years ago, I would treat them seriously. I mean, people with these mad fantasies smashed into the World Trade Center. Uh, they weren't just talking. Mm -hmm. And Iran is talking about getting 25 atomic bombs a year Within three years, they'll start. And within a decade, they plan to have 250 bombs. They're developing long-range missiles. They already have missiles that reach Israel long ago. They're developing long-range missiles to reach every European city and ultimately the east coast of the United States. Now, you can sit back and you say, OK, so what's important about that? Russia had, uh, has nuclear weapons. The Soviet Union before it has nuclear weapons. China has nuclear weapons. Right, this is different. This is very different. So you can say what you want about the Soviets, but they always put their survival before their ideology. That's true of any other power that has nuclear weapons today. It is not true of the mad uh, radical Muslims, because we've seen it in Manhattan, we've seen it in the Pentagon, we've seen it in Madrid, we've seen it in many, many places. These people are willing to commit suicide, sometimes collective suicide. They put their ideology over their lives. Now, you could have potentially a suicidal regime in Tehran with atomic weapons thinking that you are the great Satan. You want that? Right, no. I don't. No. If you no. don't want it, you have to do everything in your power to persuade the American government to live up to President Bush's express uh, uh, policy mm -hmm. of not allowing Iran to acquire nuclear weapons. I think this is an issue that will define the future of our world. Uh, this interview uh, being released to you now is probably much more effective than if it had been released seven years ago because everything that the Prime Minister has said has happened exactly like he said it. Everything that he stated uh, was so prophetic and has happened. Now, how should this impact us as believers, as Christians, as Christian Zionists? That means we're Christians that believe in the success and, and future of Israel. Uh, we're not dumbed down. We're not uh, ignorant. We're not just Christians that don't think Israel matters. It does matter. But how should that affect us? It should imprint us with a realization, this is, this is real. It's, it's here. It's now. It's happening. And what are you going to do about it? You have to stand up. You can't stick your head in the sand. You can't play ostrich anymore. You've got to stand up and stand with Israel. Very powerful. Thank you for sharing those videos with us. Any closing comments? Uh, if I could look at this camera. In Psalms 122 and 6, yes. it says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. May they have peace within their palaces. And may we say for our brethren's sake, Shabbat Shalom Yerushalayim. May the Sabbath rest of God's sovereign promise raise up in you. May you pray for the peace of VTN. Pastor Happy Caldwell, Dr. Dwayne Miller, Pastor John Hagee, all these men of God who stand up for Israel. May they be blessed. May they prosper. May their platforms grow larger and larger and may the truth protect you and set you free as you stand with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen.
Let's stretch our hands towards our VTN viewing audience. Father, we pray for all those that are watching today, and we ask you to imprint them mm. with the revelation uh, of these words, these interviews, everything that's being said, and, and put it in their hearts mm -hmm. of what you want them to do, what's their part yes. in this end time uh, event. And we thank you for mm -hmm. blessing Pastor Landry, mm -hmm. uh, Pastor Kurt, uh, and Pastor Miller, and blessing VTN yes, and blessing CUFI. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. And thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate this so much. It's been such a blessing. And uh, I want to encourage people to contact them. Uh, here's the information on the screen again. Kurt Landry Ministries, P.O. Box 430, Fairland, Oklahoma, 74343. Toll free phone, 855-208-0723. The website is KurtLandry.com. Uh, you can go online, you can call, you can write. And, of course, Pastor Dwayne Miller, you have his uh, email address and you see him every week right here uh, on VTN. And uh, uh, the church's uh, responsibility is to not only pray for the peace of Jerusalem, it, it says you will prosper. It says prosperity will be within your gates. You will not only prosper, but you will be helping the nation of Israel. You'll be standing with Israel uh, in these last days. And, and Pastor Miller's uh, ministry is equally uh, important in uh, illustrating these points and ministering. Uh, I'm going to be ministering in his church in El Dorado just in a, in a few days. August the 20th, come see us. Always come a delight. Seven yes, yeah. amen. Always a delight to be in El Dorado uh, with the saints down there. And uh, not only stand with Israel, but stand with us. I, I was sharing with them earlier, I would really like to do programs like this more often. And uh, uh, you'd be praying with us about that. Stand with us and, and help us because VTN has the opportunity uh, of bringing these kind of things to the forefront and sharing them with you on a regular basis. Uh, you're not getting the, the whole truth when you watch secular media. You're not getting the whole truth of what's going on uh, in these nations. But with VTN and with uh, uh, protégés like this, you would get the truth. So remember us in prayer and uh, thank you for joining us. Remember Jesus is Lord of Arkansas and where you're watching too. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at Post Office Box 22007, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221, or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com.